Bad news guys, this will be my last video ever on the next arc. It's been a while, four months or so, but it's time to wrap up this arc. Quick recap, on the last episode, I finally managed to get the last drop from Next, which was also the last drop I needed to complete full Torva. But it's time to wrap up this arc with the last thing on the list, which is to test out full Torva. I'm going on a deep dive using various melee weapons with full Torva at different bosses to see how big of an improvement it is over the previous best assault melee, which was Bandos and the face guard. Also, this video will tie in very heavily with collection lot progress as there's many boss item slots I haven't filled because I obtained many of them before the log and just some I've never gotten. So we will fill a bunch of log slots while testing out Torva. If you're excited for this crazy Torva collection lot style video testing, give it a like and subscribe for future Rage 3 content in which I hope to get all the insane drops there and try to master their uses too in the future. Before I actually left Ice Prison for good, of course I wanted to use Full Torva at next because that's actually one of the best places to use Full Torva. So the hybrid method at next, which involves ranging and mailing, is the fastest way to kill the boss. Now there is the more popular and easier method that people do that is also very reliable and powerful, which is just ranging the boss the whole time. But Full Torva is really good. It will definitely save you time, especially in smaller teams. Let's say you're doing a duos on a main or trios and four mans. Full Torva will definitely be quite useful in those cases, especially if you're doing one kill trips. Your times will definitely be faster overall than just pure ranging, especially because those kills do take a while. So switching between the gear isn't as bad. I wouldn't really recommend bringing such a switch when doing a bigger team like sixes, for example, because you do end up phasing the boss a bit too fast. So you're switching a little too much for the little amount of time that you get to use per stage. So definitely really good in small teams like twos and threes, fours, when you are going for like one or two kill trips. I definitely enjoyed using melee overall, even without the legs, but with the legs is even nicer. You do get the extra max hit. So TLDR, I do recommend full Torva melee switch if you're doing small teams and short trips. Otherwise, stick to maybe Karos or just full range with Tebow and the ZZB. Let me introduce you to Raid Shadow Legends, a fun and versatile game for your PC and mobile. It's a turn-based fantasy game that features hundreds of mythical champions for you to utilize and strategize to take down various PvM encounters, like raid bosses or dungeons, and even win in PvP arenas. Raid has been out for 3 years and during this time, they've had some monumental updates, like the Doom Tower, with 120 floors full of challenging bosses for you to conquer with every climb. Raid is always getting updated and this month, they have the Forged Pass 3, a limited time artifact set, new champions being released, and new skins for the epic champion, Madame Ceres. The biggest update this month is the Death Knight buff. It's becoming a legendary cheer champion. Get ahead of the rest and download Raid now using my link so you can receive a free $30 starter pack, Tayro champion, and all this extra loot by clicking on the inbox. All right, let's go test out a few things. I'm already max strength and uh, boosted as well. Let's see what Torva is looking like. 55 with the original best in slot. It was 53. Wow. With the rape here and max max max. Wow, it's two max hits. That's insane. That's quite the upgrade. And just having one piece off is uh one max hit difference. Okay, what about on Slayer Task? Let's see. 60. So it's only one difference on Slayer Task. Slayer Task is 61 and interesting. What about the scythe here? 54, wow. Okay, with Torva. And then it's 53. Oh, wow. One max it. Yes, yes. We already figured that out because even having one piece like this is still 54, I believe. Yep. And what about off tasks? What was the scythe like? 48. And then with Torva. 
Max Torva is 49. One max hit increase with uh, full Torva. Let's see if... Uh... Oh wow, just having one piece difference is still 49, so... Alright, let's see what Claw's max hits were. It was 42 off task, and we have... 48 on task, right. Now let's see what the max of Claw's is with full Torva. Here we go, it is 44! Oh my god, that's quite the upgrade, jeez. Off task, and then on task we get 49. Okay, so it's one higher now. So full Torva will essentially replace Bandos at everywhere that you would normally use it at. So various different bosses, and I'll try my best to cover as many bosses as I can in this video in relation to my collection of progress, but it should showcase a lot of the bosses that you have in mind. I'll cover Theater Blood first since that is a race level piece of content and it is the most heavily melee piece of content, pretty much. So you definitely want to focus on that, but I will tamp stamp other bosses as well. So if you are picky, you can just use time sense. but I encourage you to just watch the whole video as it is collection log progress related. Do make a lot of progress in the collection log. So full Torva is a massive upgrade over Bandos at Theater of Blood in two ways. The first one, of course, is the max hit, especially with a scythe that's three max hits since it swings three times, but with other weapons, it will definitely be at least one max hit. And the second one is that you can wear a Blood Fairy with full Torva setup and still keep the new max hit with the scythe. And that's insane because essentially, you can bring in double the food with the Blood Fairy and still do basically near maximum damage available. You're only missing five accuracy because the torture would otherwise give you that, right? Over the fury. But again, it's negligible. Max hit is so important and you keep it. So for Theory of Blood Harmo, of course, as well, you will have a much easier time if you do have access to full Torva Scythe with the Blood Fairy. It is absolutely nasty. So when I went to the Theater of Blood with full Torva, I spent a whole day there. And every time I did a top, whether it was Harmo or regular, I would bring a learn with us as low as 0kc. And the reason why is two reasons. The first reason is that it would allow me to use Torva a lot longer per fight because, you know, we have a learner. So they're, they're going to be struggling and not doing too much DPS or otherwise they're just dead, which really forces us carries to be in a clutch situation where we really have to go extra hard. I wanted to test the clutchness of full Torva, of course. And there were definitely times where... You know, because we were short a person early, like in Harmel Tob, for example, where uh, P2 Verzik, I had like basically two brutes. But because Torva's new max hit and also the combination of keeping that max hit with the Blood Fairy allowed me and my teammates to clear it with very little problem. I still have food left by the end of it. Today's testing really did show that full Torva definitely has quite a big clutch factor and just overall stronger DPS. Because normally, in a situation like this, if I were to clear it, I probably would have had no food by the end of it. But I still had a bunch of food left, so... And again, you keep the max hit with the blood fruit, so it's amazing survival and max capability. Melee? Oh, 49, there it is. Oh my god. Hey, nice. I thought I was gonna get hit. What do you have for me? Oh yeah, this guy's gonna give me uh, the shrouds based on the KC that I've completed. So I should be able to get the 1000. Yeah, yeah, the sh tier three, there's a 1000. And there's a tier five for 2000. Uh, Well, I guess maybe if it takes me that long to get like those other items again, right? It's possible I could just get all the way up to five without really trying. But yeah, that's just two free slots because somehow I had this one already. I can put these in my house, I think, right? Well, you can change these. Oh, wow. Okay. I totally forgot to get these capes. I totally should have gotten them a long time ago. So time for me to unlock like a boss. Just so that way I can actually do collection lock stuff a bit nicer. And that way it gives me more opportunity to try out the, all the new gear and stuff. Abyssal Demons. Oh, this is good. I still have some unfinished business to sire for uh, log stuff since we got those things in the past, but that was before the log stuff. So what is it? Uh, a dagger and a jar. Damn, man. I've got like two of these jars, man, I swear. And multiple daggers, so. So there's plenty of niche weapons like Art Light, which is specifically strong against certain 
types of monsters. In this case, Art Light is strong against demons. And it's too annoying to test it on the dumb because it won't show the max hit unless I switch it around. So I have to show you in action. And with Torva though, there is some significant changes with some of these niche weapons. I'll show you now. Oh, 64. Holy shit. There it is. Ah, I hit it. That is, yep. I knew I knew it was either 63 or 64. It it's 64 now. Normally at Sire, if your stab and slash style is the same max hit, then stab is a teeny bit better here. But because with max max setup like here, the only way to achieve that 64 is through slash. You definitely want to be on slash because getting that 64 is huge. So really significant upgrade with art light here at Sire. Just freaking made it, bro. Holy shit. Oh my god. Max it again. <gasps> 60. Oh, 49. There it is. The claw. Oh my god. Oh my god. The 49 claw, dude. So I've been doing the POH method for a long time. It's very supply efficient and still good kills per hour. So before this setup, I was getting around 25-ish kills an hour. But with Torva, I'm actually getting around like 27, but in this hour, I'm closing in on 30 kills an hour. Damn, these guys have all matured, Monka. Oh, I'm tired. Let's go. Yes, please. Give me a dagger or a jar. I, I would prefer to get the jar first again. Please. New item. Damn, a bludgeon piece? No. No, don't give me cave hearts again. Oh, servers. Yes, nice, nice, nice. Nice. Uh, okay, we got Cerberus next. Need to get a Smoldering Stone again and Eternal again, so. Now we can use. Uh, we know the Art Light Max is 64 with our new setup. So recently, Jagex made it so that the Art Light is now strong against Hellhounds and Cerberus, classifying them as official demons. And we know that art light got a new max hit full torvers so i went straight to servers to test it out and it was really good it was definitely better than a t-bow uh t-bow is getting like 45 kills an hour whereas with art light i was easily getting 47 kills an hour on my first few hours so without much practice i was still already beating the twisted bow so definitely consider this item now the art light is not really the main highlight here with Torva. It's actually going to be the scythe because it is disgusting. I will show you why here. Yeah, we're doing pretty good though. Yeah, this, this method is hot. So the scythe method at Cerberus is the fastest method out there. It's 10 plus kills more an hour over like a T-Bow and the art light. So nothing comes close to the scythe. And previously... You would pair the scythe with inquisitors i personally tested it and it was super nice for kill speeds for sure but there was a weakness with inquisitor the defense sucked it was like addy level armor so cerberus would hit you really often so you had to compensate with the blood fairy or like bring a spectral and a lot of food to stay here for a long time now with torva though torva is so tanky and you also get that max hit with the scythe that you get basically the same kill speeds as before, but you take way less damage. So you can stay really long time without even using a Blood Fury or a Spectre or anything. I was able to stay for like an hour with the Sight Torva setup and rarely using the Blood Fury. So it was so freaking good. And again, the kill times were very fast, like 60 kills an hour almost. So there is a bit of a debate between whether or not you should wear a Torva Legs or Inquisitor Skirt because like I said, if you wear Inquisitor Skirt, you still keep the max of 54 and you gain a bit of accuracy. But honestly, personally, I prefer having the Torva Legs because it's way tankier, so you don't have to worry about eating. And you also can keep the max hit with the Blood Fairy, as I've mentioned before. So overall, I prefer Torva Legs over Inquisitor Legs with Scythe here. Yo, that's crazy, dude. I still haven't even used the Blood Fury, so... I think I'll just keep the Blood Fury with me, though, for backup. I don't even think this trip was exceptionally lucky or anything. I barely got... I got one food drop, I got one prayer drop. That was it. 40 minutes. Yeah, the defense is just so good. So oh, yes! Let's go, Smoldering Stone. Ah, yay! I got another one of these. Ah, <laughs> Let's go. 
That means just one more item left, guys. All right, we just need to get the uh, Eternal Crystal, maybe next task. So the Scythe method is really good at saving prayer just because you can often skip the ghosts, especially if you do the two to one method like I do here, where I do two hits and then it only hits me once. It delays the ghost spawning, so a lot of the times I'll kill it before it even happens like that. I can still stay here for up to an hour, even without a spectral. Damn, I skipped it again. Skipping ghost. Yo, we just finished the Serb task. And this was crazy. So I lost an entire kill because I got 6 hour luck. But um, yeah, 55 kills an hour basically. I did 44 kills this trip. And it took around under 49 minutes. And I didn't bank once, so... It's freaking... <laughs> It's freaking insane, dude. I'm just gonna keep using this method until I, I get the last drop for the collection log because it is so fun, man. Oh shit, I forgot to mention the rates too. I was getting like close to 150k an hour, like 36k XP an hour. Yo, I got it. Oh my god. Already? Yo, that's sick. Yes, I got the Zami task. Sick. I wanted to test out uh, the Torva setup over my Justicia setup, melee style at Zami, so uh yeah we got that now and i still have to get another staff of the dead to complete this log to get it green so maybe i can get it so right away i noticed that torva definitely had quite a bit of max hits over justicia i believe with this setup i'm suffering 62 with torva and justicia it was a 59 or 60. so it's still similar but definitely torva has quite the dps edge the kill times with Torva is definitely really nice. I'm getting a lot of mid 20 second kills, but it can range up to like 40, 50 seconds as well. So Torva kill times are definitely faster when they're good. I even managed to get like a sub 20 uh, kill time with it. But honestly, there's a fair amount of fights where the boss will slap you for 40s because you don't get that damage reduction. And unfortunately, the extra damage you take from Zami with Torva does not outweigh the two max hits that you get with Torva. So I find that I definitely have to leave a lot earlier. I usually casually do 30 kill trips with Fulchus this year, but I was struggling a lot of times to even do like 20. Uh, of course, this is so melee uh, method comparisons here. So yeah, I have to say just this year still the king here. Unfortunately, Torva does not outperform just this year here. It's a rare case of where defense wins. Let's let's just destroy it. Thank you. Thanks for playing. Oh my goodness, I needed that so bad. 15 seconds! Oh my god, that was great. The classic drop food trick for God Wars. Time to utilize it again. So I can drop the hilt from Combat Diaries. Don't need that once I get here, so. We can get a billion of these anyways. I think the suffering killed it, not gonna lie. Oh, Staff of the Dead! Oh my god. Yo! Oh, we finished the Zami log, holy shit. Alright, time to tell you. Honestly, that trip, the food was not bad, but I'm just gonna say here, I don't think I need to do another Zami task to really prove a point. It is just not consistent uh, tanking damage. So I'd say just this year is still the king if you want to, you know, do some melee Zami. All right, we're going to just do a quick hour of Hydra just to see how many kills I can get an hour with this. So Konar didn't assign Zami boss as a task, but I finished it in this video, right? So I'm going back to Konar so I can get some Hydra tasks again for the pet. One of the really nice things that melee Hydra has over range Hydra is that you can tank a lot of range hits if you're just not paying much attention to Hydra's attack style changes because you're distracted. You can really just focus on Mage Prayer most of the time and you will be fine. You'll just take so many zeros. Especially with Torva, you're insanely tanky. Okay, the Lance is actually doing a lot better than I thought. Now that I'm starting to adjust to the melee method again, we're currently rocking at about a competitive rate, 25 and a half right now. Oh, I'm dead. Anyways, I did 21 kills before I basically died, but it was around 25 kills an hour, so. 
So that's only about two to three kills less than a Tebow per hour. And keep in mind, this was my first time back laying Hydra. So I was definitely not uh, the most finesse with it. But even so, I was trailing behind the Tebow rates. So that's really good. Definitely, if for some reason you only have max melee and Lance and no Tebow, definitely melee Hydra, especially with Torva, is a really close second. All right, I want to do one more boss with full Torva, and it's going to be Bandos, and you might be, uh, what are you doing at next? Well, I'll show you this cool casing method that involves next, if you, especially if you have a Tebow, but you can still do pretty well without it, but I'll show you in a second, uh, once I collect some KC. But yeah, we're going to do Bandos, and that'll be the final boss I want to do for the video. So we've already gotten like four or five different bosses with full Torva. If we're gonna go with melee, melee bandos is a classic, you know? So I wanna be able to show that on video. So let me show you guys how nice it is. So hopefully it is really nice. All right, basically this is gonna be my gear for bandos. I'll show you, I'm gonna leave this room and I'm gonna keep the KC. So, cause it, again, it's part of God Wars. But yeah, I do need to unfortunately bring something like a Staff of Light, just cause the Zami creatures and stuff would attack me otherwise, so... And we're good. So the melee bandos method is technically the fastest way to do bandos, but the skill cap is very high. You have to learn how to prefer like all the minions and the boss at the same time to make it super stonks. Whereas nowadays you have range and mage methods which can get you a lot of kills a trip with a lot less effort. But melee has way more potential though if you master it, which I will say I'm not a pro at this, uh, I've only had a bit of practice and I kind of just wing it, but it does work decently enough in this video, as you can see. But anyways, with the scythe, it's amazing, especially with bandos, man, you can tank so much range hits, and again with the blood fear combo and keeping your max hit, wow, bandos just die so fast, it doesn't even matter if you land that warhammer, I can still get 30 second kills a lot of the times but regardless so it's amazing it is so strong at bandos holy fuck that was great oh yo oh my god already <laughs> oh my god dude no yo yo shout verif dude he shows up and we get we already get a drop dude what the hell Wow, nice. Bandos is gonna be so easy to finish. I only need Tacits, I think, to finish it. Actually, yeah. I need to check. I need to check the lock after this. Yo, <laughs> I know for sure it's Tacits and maybe Boots. Maybe yeah. Boots, maybe. RNG's coming in, boy. I know, it's bad. Holy moly. That's crazy. Easy collection lock. Whew. That one's harder because I couldn't hit. Oh, there it is. A thousand KC at the Banjos. God damn. 39. 27. 40 seconds. 50 seconds. Look at these times. 39 seconds. Okay, there's a few one minutes, but, you know, that's because I'm not that great at the method. But... Alright, Bandos. General Garage Door. It is... Ah, just Tacits. Yep. Get Tacits and we're done, but... Uh, honestly, uh, I'm not in a rush, but yeah. That's it. Oh, I off ticked them. Oh, except I ticked that hit though. Oops. But it's okay. That was cool. Ah, uh, 87 Kraken. I'll probably just do it. Because, like, the Kraken test. Like, I'll show you something really interesting about this collection log for Kraken. It's for me specifically. I only need a Tentacle and I only need a Trident. And yeah, they're both fairly easy to obtain from the Kraken boss. So I think I'll just do it. Oh my god, 89? What? Oh my god, what? That's so crazy. I didn't even know I could hit that high. Easy death recharge. It works even when the tentacles disappear. So it counts as it dying, I guess. This spell is incredibly good at cracking because then you can spam your volatile specs twice as much or blowpipe specs to heal twice as often. Oh, I got, I got it. Yay, new slot. Let's go. Uh, I took like six, seven tasks, but I finally got one of the items. Let's go. All right. We just need to get the tentacle. And actually, the tentacle is the least rare drop on this list. It's like a one in, what, 400? 
Yo, out of retaliate on when barraging is the juice. I can out and, and just kill stuff at the same time. Caress? Hold on, hold on. What's good with the caress? Let's see. Oh, I don't have the leap bladed battle axe. Okay, I, I guess I'll do the caress task. Dragon harpoon. Damn, I should do the worms too then. I will unblock this task. It should be pretty quick with my gear anyways, so... Just because uh, I can get the Dragon Harpoon at 1 and 2k. And it'll also complete the slot for Temporos for the Dragon Harpoon. If I get it from the uh, Worms, so. So now that we're going to be killing these Worms in the long run, I decided I would try to figure out uh, which weapon works best here. I had a choice between Uncharged Scythe and the Dragon Hunter Lance. So the Uncharged Scythe can easily beat something like a Rape here if it's uh, on a mob like uh, these Worms here. But of course you have the lance which is strong against dragons so uh, earlier i did a test with the uncharged scythe it was 35k an hour and uh, with the lance i'm getting about 40k an hour so the lance is definitely quite a bit better than the uncharged scythe charge scythe would easily beat the lance but there's no way i'm spending blood runes right okay oh let's go armor chest play there we go what how is it not dead Yes, yo, I love when the suffering kills the boss. <laughs> I just run up to it and then I just, yeah. We have now reached 3,300. 1,700 more for the, for the raid. Oh, whoa, I just got an armor chest plate. Let me pick that up. Dang, these things are almost 50 mil. That's probably because people are getting excited for race 3 since the new BIS range armor from race 3 requires the Armadale armor to make it, just like how Bandos is used to make Torva. Come on, two quiz masters in a row? What? I got a hard clue score from this. What is that stretching? Oh, oh, that is. Oh, they need to fix this, man. Jagus, you see this? Scary. Bro. I'm totally gonna die, aren't I? Oh my god, are you serious? Grotesque Guardians is such a shit boss. That's it. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.